the Amiga CD32 was Commodore's last ditch attempt at saving the company from bankruptcy. The console was released on the 17th of September 1993 and only lasted 8 months. In the Christmas period following its launch, Commodore couldn't actually keep up with demand. The CD32 accounted for 30% of all CD-ROM sales in the UK, actually exceeding the sales of the Mega CD, and eventually they sold 100,000 units in Europe. But Commodore had shot themselves in the foot. They had a huge American patent lawsuit, which actually made them unable to sell the console in the USA, meaning a lot of them got dumped in factories in the Philippines. They rushed to release the console, pushing it forward. This really annoyed developers, put them off developing for the console, creating exclusive titles. This meant that many of the titles were kind of shovelware, just a floppy disk with a few improvements. If you were lucky, you'd get an FMV, you'd maybe get a CD soundtrack. And then Commodore declared bankruptcy on April 29th, 1994. But what had Commodore planned for the future? Were they going to keep pumping out the same old outdated technology? Or were they going to go with a drastic change? Amiga may have looked very old and dated by then, but you have to remember, when the Amiga came out in 1985, it was miles ahead of the competition. Would Commodore be able to do this leap in 1995-96? Was it too late? What did the engineers and staff have planned? The Amiga has always been built around a custom chipset, and different versions have been developed over time. Probably the most famous and highly anticipated was the Advanced Amiga architecture chipset which was developed in 1988 and cancelled in 1994, but that's another story for another video. In this video we're going to be looking at the RISC based chipset called Hombre. So what is the Hombre chipset? Well, Commodore began to design a new 64-bit 3D graphics chipset on Hewlett Packard's PA RISC architecture. It was in conjunction with Hewlett Packard over an estimated 18th month period. Now, Hombre is based on two chips, a system controller chip and a display controller chip. Engineer Dave Haney said it would portray little resemblance to previous Amigas. There have been no plans to provide an Amiga OS port or offer compatibility with previous models. Here's a clip of Dave on my podcast, The Retro Hour, actually talking about the Hombre chipset and the plans for the CD64. You, you may have heard something about Hombre. Mm -hmm. That was a chipset, that yeah? That's a chips. That was a two chip set, maybe with some extra stuff that did. Um, you know, it had a, it had its own built in PowerPC processor that was designed um, in house. Um, it had its own graphics system, which was you know chunky graphics, completely different than Amiga. I mean, it took you know it took some Amiga ideas and expanded on them. Like it had, you could have four 16-bit deep play fields, so you know 16-bit chunky play, chunky pixels, four play fields of that. Um, it had three you know the the PowerPC instruction set had been expanded to include 3D instructions, so you would actually have. Not like today's GPUs with you know thousands of processing units, but for the day it would have had some pretty you know some pretty sweet uh, you know 3D graphics potential. Um, that was designed to with the two chips and maybe maybe some uh, you know some small bit you know some low cost I/O chips that would have been your game machine. But then you put that on a card. It spoke PCI, and it would have been a pretty nice graphics card with its own power pc chip sitting there to run open gl or whatever you wanted to run on it you know with the 3d instructions and all so we would have had a pretty good you know pretty good add-in graphics card at the same time and i was at you know from 9091 on i was working on the essentially what you might call the a5000 i was working on the next generation architecture it was kind of funny because Ed Hepler was kind of working in secret on Ombre. I was working mostly in secret, not secret like I wasn't telling anybody about it, just secret because it was one of these Skunkworks projects that wasn't really, you know, it was just like, you know, something I chose to work on. Um, and we had both decided that PCI was the way to go because of the standards, because it actually solved a bunch of problems for, you know, a small pin count, high speed going from chip to chip, that sort of thing. So, um, we we had we had independently built systems that would have supported each other's uh, new stuff had we gotten that far. And this Ombre chipset would that would that kind of been like a CD sixty four kind of console system then? It, I, yeah, 
Yeah, the the first one would have probably been some, you know, it might have it might I'm not sure there's anything in there that was really 64, but that never stopped uh, Sega or anybody else from <laughs> using that word. So, um yeah, it would have been something like that. It would have been, you know, it would have been a I doubt it was fast enough to emulate an Amiga, but it would have been a, it would have been an upgrade. I mean, the the one thing is that uh, game consoles didn't really have to be compatible, but didn't have to be backward compatible. I mean, you know, that's sort of come and gone between generations but you know at that point that would have taken these you know the the uh the a the, the or the cd32 from being a pretty good game machine to wow this is like you know this is like up there with uh you know with with uh sony or you know whoever is making the best machines that day you know that particular week was it kind of on par with the playstation one like in terms of power then i i think it would probably be faster in some things and slower on others but it's hard to say exactly i think the i think the place i i i have to look back it's been so long <laughs> looking at those systems but you know same yeah i think same basic idea plus the cd um you know obviously you need that you, you needed that at that point for the you know for the game capacity we're quite ready for dvd yet now the cd64 as a console was kind of in early conceptual stages they're still limited details on his capabilities and i'm going to be showing you a bit of fan art in the background of kind of recreations that people have done of the cd64 you know 3d printed case by the wonderful amiga Ang. now the existing specifications of the cd64 would indicate that it offers similar graphics performance to the sega saturn if that was using the hombre chipset um, it would also have OpenGL support, which would be on the CD, avoiding the cost of a Kickstart ROM. Now, of course, you can't have a Commodore product without David Pleasant's marketing dude making a comment about it. And he says, the CD64 might want to change the name to avoid confusion with the C64. Good point. And it will run circles around the new one, release Sega Saturn and Nintendo Project Reality. So was that just kind of hype? Well, I don't know, because I don't know what David Pleasance has seen. I don't know what Dave Haney's seen. I don't know what Ed Hepler's seen. But I do know that I've seen a document that's on archive.org that I'm going to link in the description, which shows that they were taking this seriously. They had a meeting with Philips two days before bankruptcy. And, you know, Philips was pretty much Sony's big rival at the time. Now, also, you need to look at the developers. So Worms, you know, Team 17, they they developed Worms. That was released on the CD32. Worms 2 was coming out. That could have pretty easily been done. DMA Designs had previously done Lemmings titles. You know, Race and Chase, which turned into Grand Theft Auto, kind of started design in 1995 and started development then. Um, Core Designs as well. They did Skeleton Crew on the CD32. And uh, then Tomb Raider in 1996. So, you know, maybe in an alternative world... Uh, we could have had this Risk Amiga CD64. Um, you know, this video is just for fun. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I'm also not saying that this is the future of Amiga. I had a few people in my other video um, kind of thinking that I'm like an Amiga evangelicalist. No, um, basically, I think it's a hobby system. But I really want to talk about the next generation of Amiga because many people stop the history of Amiga when it comes to Commodore. That's it. It just goes Commodore, bankruptcy, end. and I want to cover all of it. So I'm going to be doing a lot more videos about all this strange products, strange kind of companies that came through, failed projects, vaporware, all of that. So please like and subscribe. Ciao.